Howdy LP here. As you probably heard, Dio Odalecki, the founder of Greater Cleveland Cop Block, the person who spearheads the Cop Block store currently, um, and a very involved person on the ground in and around Ohio, is now caged in Parma, which is just on the outskirts of Cleveland. Today I took a moment to draft a letter to Dio, and I wanted to share it in case, you know, maybe it motivates you to to take a moment to send him a piece of mail as well. I'm sure he'd appreciate hearing from you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this letter. It's just uh, one. It's I guess you could call it two pages. One page front and back, and you can see my sort of chicken scratch writing. Um, but I say greetings, salutations, and much love to you. I know you're not now in a physical place that is ideal, being caged without cause. But I hope that you're mentally remaining steadfast. While at times that may feel difficult or improbable due to simply being immersed in a setting populated by arbitrary dictates and unthinking people, those who kidnapped and who are now caging you, not necessarily others similarly situated, your conscience has a powerful go-to. The fact that far from acting as an aggressor, you and both the reasons cited for your caging were actively helping strangers. On June 13th, 2014, you sought to share information with passing motorists so that they could then choose to alter their course and thus not be harassed and potentially extorted by individuals who have the gall to proclaim themselves as protectors. In fact, one of those protectors, who previously served a teenager in the area with his flashlight and which resulted in a settlement that area taxpayers uh, foot the bill for, uh, in fact, one of those protectors proceeded to steal your property, he took Dio's sign from him, then claimed that it was you who obstructed justice. Indeed, when one group of people claims and is granted the right to define and interpret the rules, they will always seek to protect themselves and their institutions. You know, Dio was out there holding the checkpoints, saying, turn here, checkpoint ahead, or whatever, and uh, these would-be extorters weren't too happy about that. Same story on June 29th. 2015. You are well aware and have experienced the double standards acted upon by individuals who are thought by some to have a legal right to initiate force. So you filmed to create an objective record and perhaps make more likely their comporting to basic human behavior. Do no harm. Instead, they chose to escalate, levy you with multiple threats, and see their false pretense of justice be perpetuated by their colleague wearing a black robe in legal land. And I also noted that uh, disallowing your video content but allowing that of those seeking to cage you was reminiscent of Ross Ulbricht, how he was funneled through legal land with a conclusion to censor him already decided. You likely have seen the Emerson quote from self-reliance written in 1841 that was made into a meme which states a man is to carry himself in the presence of all opposition as if everything were titular and ephemeral but he I'm ashamed to think how easily we capitulate to badges and names <clears throat> end quote again it can be tough to rise above situations in which your physical person is prevented freedom of movement but even then even now you out of all those involved in your current predicament, can find peace, knowing that you acted according to a universal law more powerful than any legalese. Your love of justice, responsibility, helping those around you, ousting aggressors and evildoers, and thusly, your love of fellow men. Fe fellow men, humans. On one hand, I was surprised to hear of the conclusion reached by the jury and by the duration you were told to be caged, to right your wrongs or repay society. But on the other hand, we both know the incentives inherent in an institution and amongst those who choose to be its actors that's backed by and founded upon coercion. And indeed, to such regimes and enforcers, you and the ideas you espouse, even though nonviolent, are what most threatens their status quo. And then in the margin I put a little quote from Frederick, Frederick Douglass that says, the limitation of tyrants is the endurance of those they oppose. Because, 
As soon as someone sees past their rhetoric and conditioning, they lose control of that person. They lack perceived legitimacy, and their actions are seen not with given deference, sorry, not given deference, but stark and naked for what they represent, coercion. So while they, these claims may now have you, your person caged, they cannot ever regain control of your mind. A free mind, that is key to self-ownership, and I hope you find the strength and solace in that victory and present state. I'm glad to know a demo has been on the ground and able to see you and keep those of us not as close in the loop. Yesterday evening he and I spoke via Google Hangouts. I recorded it and today plan to chop up a video using the portion when we discussed your situation. A demo did a great job summarizing the background and pointing out the things any person oriented by common sense would conclude. That it is you, despite being the one now caged, who is on the right side of justice. I was happy too to hear that Paul was able to drop by. He's a gentleman who lives here in New Hampshire as well. Please let me know through a demo, I suppose, if there's anything specific I can do for you or Monica, Dio's wife. Can you receive books? Any you've been wanting to read? Much love, my brother. I look forward to seeing you soon. And I signed it. And then I have a quote at the bottom here by Francis Marion. It says, if we be ruined for bravely resisting tyranny, what then be our fate should we submit?